All right, let's begin class with our prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Tiber Martyrs, pray for us. St. Thomas Aquinas, pray for us. In the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Okay, so today we're going to be finishing up the posterior analytics, uh, going over chapter 19. So what I'll do is I'll be reading some excerpts from the text and then uh, providing the uh, commentary and explanation. So posterior analytics chapter 19. As regards syllogism and demonstration, the definition of and the conditions required to produce each of them are now clear. And with that also the definition of and the conditions required to produce demonstrative knowledge, since it is the same as demonstration. As to the basic premises, how they become known, and what is the developed state of knowledge of them is made clear by raising some preliminary problems. So logic is straightforward enough. Uh, it's uh, in our nation easily recognize how two sets of premises, two premises can lead to a conclusion and how that conclusion is necessarily true uh, based on the condition that the premises are also true. The issue that we're dealing with is with the knowledge that's in the premises themselves. How can we come to the knowledge of the premises in the first place? We have already said that scientific knowledge through demonstration is impossible unless a man knows the primary immediate premises. But there are questions which might be raised in respect of the apprehension of these immediate premises. One might not only ask whether it is of the same kind as the apprehension of the conclusions, but also whether there is or is not scientific knowledge of both, or scientific knowledge of the latter, and of the former a different kind of knowledge. And further, whether the developed states of knowledge are not innate but come to be in us, or are innate but at first unnoticed. So the question here is raising here is, is there a distinction between the kinds of knowledge that you have that supplies you with premises and then the kinds of knowledge that you get from conclusions uh, and arguments? So our conclusions, are they um, scientific knowledge, but the premises are not scientific knowledge, or are both considered uh, valid as scientific knowledge uh, what have you. Are the premises innate in us? Okay, so are we born with knowing the premises, uh, these first principles, or is it something that we acquire later on in life? If you remember Plato, Plato's position was that we were born with knowledge of universals that we experienced in our past life, um, and that through dialectic we then remember what we had forgotten because we were distracted by our bodies. All right, so when uh, looking at whether or not ideas are innate in us, okay, that we're born with them, Aristotle says it would be strange to have a situation where we're born with ideas but then forget them, all right? Even though Plato offers the explanation that's because we're distracted by our bodies, um, Aristotle finds that explanation to be somewhat funky. All right, uh, he says, if on the other hand, we acquire them, we acquire this knowledge, rather than being born with it, we go out and we acquire it through life, and do not previously possess them, how could we apprehend and learn without a basis of pre-existent knowledge? For that is impossible, and we use, as we use to find in the case of demonstration. All right, so if we only learn through demonstrations, arguments, and going from premises to conclusions, how can we learn at all if we don't have anything to supply the initial premises with? So Aristotle concludes, concludes, it emerges that neither we possess ideas from birth, nor can they come to be in us if we are without knowledge of them, to the extent of having no such developed state at all. Aristotle then concludes, we must possess a capacity of some sort, but not such as to rank higher in accuracy than these developed states. 
All right, so according to Aristotle, man has, he's not born with innate ideas, but he also definitely learns through demonstration. So in order for us to learn through demonstration, we have to come to know some premises. So what he's saying is that man in his nature has the capacity to acquire ideas, all right, other than simply learning from demonstration. All right, and this is Aristotle's epistemology. Um, this is what's known as induction. All right, so induction, you know, element of knowledge. According to Aristotle, proceeds in the following manner. All right, so development of human knowledge, right? Also known as the science of induction. All right, so he says that to start things off, first and foremost, is man or all animals have sense perceptions. The sense perceptions, the information we receive from our senses is the basis of all our knowledge. When you have multiple sense uh, perceptions, they become sense impressions, and these sense impressions are the basis of memory. All right? It's not simply enough to see something once, okay, and then to have a thorough knowledge of it and completely memorize it, but after examining something multiple times, okay, looking closely at it, uh, which is like an ongoing sense perception, right, you can develop a uh, a trustworthy memory of that object. Then after you have enough sense impressions, you then uh, develop frequent memories. And when you have frequent memories of something, it's what Aristotle calls experience. All right. So if you have several memories regarding a subject, well, then you're well experienced in that subject. Now, once man has a sufficient amount of experience, from his experience, all these individual sense perceptions eventually build up to universal knowledge, okay? It requires uh, sensing and perceiving many, many, many individuals, all right? And after we have become acquainted with several individuals, like say you're, uh, you become acquainted with several dogs, okay? And you have multiple experiences with them, sens sensory experiences with them and your experience with the animal, you then come to a universal knowledge, say, of that species, of dogs, for example. Now, when man has acquired universal knowledge, he's then capable of craftsmanship and also science. All right, when man has universal knowledge, he's capable of craftsmanship as well as uh, doing science when in that uh, specific area that he possesses universal knowledge of, okay? So the whole issue is where do our first premises come from? They come ultimately from our sense perceptions and build up into universal concepts. So let's take a look at a syllogism with its premises and its conclusion. We'll do the basic one um, that... Uh, all men are mortal. And Socrates is a man. Therefore, uh, Socrates is mortal. All right, so for Aristotle, this conclusion is what he's referring to as the scientific knowledge that we arrive at through deduction, right? Through logic, through reasoning. We come to the conclusion uh, with certitude that Socrates is in fact mortal. The ideas, right? Socrates, man, mortal, okay? The ideas that are, that supply the premises, um, these, we develop these through induction, okay? Through our sense perceptions, through our memories, through us becoming experienced with them, okay? And then we're able to draw from that 
a universal concept. And then with those universal concepts, we're able to then uh, do uh, you know syllogistic reasoning, scientific reasoning. All right, continuing uh, with the posterior analytics. We conclude that these states of knowledge are neither innate in a determinate form nor developed from other higher states of knowledge, but from sense perception. It is like our route in battle, stopped by first one man making a stand and then another until the original formation has been restored. The soul is so constituted as to be capable of this process. So as we're receiving, the analogy uses that as we're receiving all the sense uh, information, our soul um, is able to grasp onto one individual like a soldier who is running away from an enemy, but he stands and he holds his ground. And then the next sense of perception we have of uh, something in the same class comes and it's like another soldier who stands his ground next to the other soldier. And all these different sense perceptions that we have build up, build up until you have a military formation in place again. All right, and that mil that uh, military formation that Aristotle is talking about is the development of the universal concept. Okay, it takes multiple sense perceptions of the individual to then formulate and develop that universal concept. Let us now restate restate the account given already though with insufficient clearness. When one of a number of logically indiscriminable particulars has made a stand, the earliest universal is present in the soul. For though the act of sense perception is of the particular, its content is universal. For example, uh, is man, for example, not the man Callicles? A fresh stand is made among these rudimentary universals and the process does not cease until the individual concepts, or sorry, the indivisible concepts, the true universals, are established. Uh, for example, such and such a species of animal is a step toward the genus animal, which by the same process is a step towards a further generalization. All right, so it all starts with our sense data and our knowing of a particular to our sense data we also implicitly know the universal. The first inklings of universal knowledge is present in the sense data we have of the individual. When a group of rudimentary uh, universals come together, that is when we're able to better generalize concepts and have universal knowledge. Uh, the universal is found in the particular. However, in order to see the universal clearly, we need to know many particulars. This is known as the process of induction. All right, it's the process of induction is the process of moving from particular sense data and experiences to abstracting universal concepts. All right, that ends uh, the uh, posterior analytics.